We're here with Marcin Mrazinski. <laughs> Marcin Mrazinski. That's going to be easier. <laughs> As I said. <laughs> Marcin. Sounds a bit posh. <laughs> ah, Poland 2010. <laughs> Now, Marcel, you're actually living in London now. I do live in London. I moved six months ago here. Ah, and what motivated you? Well, I wanted to start everything from the beginning. Um, I wanted to have a blank page, you know, and write down the new story of my life. Uh, but the truth is, I got a little bit bored of my life before. I said, like, I need some challenges in my life. And London was always one of my dreams to come here and to, to work here to do something. Uh, musicals, that's the thing which I love. Um, so I was like, I need to do something in my life. I need to make a step, you know, I need to, I need to do something at least in my life. So I decided to move here to London. Finally, after thinking about that for 10 years already, I said like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? And do you think there are more musical opportunities in London compared to Poland? Well, definitely there are more opportunities, but at the same time it's like more people, you know. Uh, in Poland you have an auditions like 1,200 people. In UK you have an auditions like 12,000 people. So you can imagine it's like, it's, it, it's kind of the same like in Poland, but but here in the market is it's it's much bigger, especially for musicals. But right now I, I signed a contract for um, for my own songs. I'm I'm making my own songs here in London. Um, oh, we have some question, I guess. So we have a question from one of our readers. Marsan is competing in the finals of Archer Street Got Talent. Um, yeah, I I took a part in this competition. Uh, quite funny. I, I found it, the information about that somewhere. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? So I took a part in, in, in Archer's Street Scat Talent. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. It was cool. Uh, but I'm definitely not a person to compete anymore. It's like I don't have this feeling like I have to compete. Um, so I did more for fun. Uh, but it was nice. And is that a voice competition or a songwriting competition? No, it was like a song song singing, like voice, yeah, this kind of competition. And the music that you're recording now, is it in the style of Legenda, your Eurovision? No, show? no, absolutely not. I did uh, I did Legenda, I wrote Legenda with my friend composer Marcin Nirowitz, because we wanted to make a song uh, for Eurovision, you know, to make a song which is gonna represent our country, show a little bit of our tradition music a bit culture. That's why we put together folk music and pop because we still wanted to have it a bit more fresh. Um, well, what came out, it was like folk with a little bit musical, so it was more on my on my side. Um, but it was, it was good. I, I, I still think it's a good song. It had a terrible presentation on the stage. It was absolutely horrible on the stage. I still can't watch the videos, like, oh my god, I hate it. But it's a good song, so I guess with another presentation, it might have gone a bit better. At the time, did you think the presentation was good? At the time, I had had full of everything, you know. It's like, I had to think of everything because I didn't have any support from our national broadcaster. So I had to think about everything by myself. And I, was like, I was completely overloaded with thoughts. You know, I was like, I didn't know what's good, what's bad. It's like, the only thing I wanted to do is like being on the stage already and say done. You know, I was like so tired of everything. And then I went on Eurovision and it was so nice, you know, so many great people, uh, great singers, uh, fans of Eurovision are crazy. I love them so much. It's like crazy people. I love them. You know, like full of passion to, to, to Eurovision. You know, they want to share this passion. And I found lots of friends. I still have lots of friends. Like we're still like texting to each other or sending some messages on Facebook. You know, I like their are still trying to trying to find out what I'm doing you know um, they like my new songs they always ask me when is your album coming that's cool without Eurovision I wouldn't have it uh, so I'm glad I did it if I could change the presentation I would definitely do that uh, can I ask you what was the concept with the presentation I have no idea <laughs> I have no idea um, I was not the one who was doing the, the 
presentation. Uh, as I said, I was too tired of everything. So I, my friend said, I can help you. I was like, okay, please do it. Please help me. Then I saw it and I was like, well, actually, I don't know what, what I should think about that because it was unique. It was special. But I didn't know if I like it or not. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it might be good because people might remember, you know. It's it's always important as well to, to be to be remembered, you know. It's like how many people every year are competing and how many of them you remember and you really know what's happened on the stage. Like few of them. But as we talked before the this interview, you said like girls with apples. Yes, girls with apples. You remember something at least. That's good, you know, that's good that you you that you remember me. Uh, from bad or good, it doesn't matter right now, but you remember. So it's good for the future if I one day come back to Eurovision and say, yes, I'm going to do Eurovision one more time. Then you know who I am. Then you say, oh, it's the guy from Apples. Right. We know him. We know him already. Uh, so that's good. But same time, the presentation, yes, wasn't like amazing. It was very theatrical. A bit more to drama, you know. It's like I think it was too dramatic. <laughs> we love a bit of drama. <laughs> yeah, we all a bit drama. But I guess you know a lot of people enter Eurovision with the hope that it will transform their lives and that perhaps it will open them to new markets and launch their career. Did your expectations come to re you know, become a reality, or was there disappointment afterwards? Uh, well, I was not expecting anything. You know, I was just fulfilling my dreams. When I was eight, I said to myself, I'm going to do Eurovision one day. And then, you can imagine what's happened. It's like I took part, I won. People said, yes, we won marching to, to represent our country. You know, I got like 30, more than 33 percent of the all votes in Poland. So it's like a lot. The next person got just 15. So it's like, wow, people really wanted me to represent the country. Uh, and that was just my dream to do that. Of course, I was thinking like that might be nice, you know, if I if I do something more, if I if I go somewhere. But it happened. I was invited to so many concerts around Europe, you know. In Poland, it didn't really work that much because it never works in Poland, you know. Eurovision. If you lose Eurovision, you're a loser of Eurovision. That's what people think about. That's why so many like big names in Poland don't want to compete, don't want to go there because they have too much to lose, you know. If they they will not get through. They will be losers of Eurovision and then people will not buy them anymore. They will not buy their CDs. They will say, oh, they suck. You know? So that's why there are not so many artists, so many names, big names uh, who want to go and do Eurovision. I hope it's going to change very soon again. Uh, maybe this year, you know, if we get any good place, if we pass uh, the semis, if we get to the final, even if we get like in the middle of the final that would be perfect because then more people would think oh we're back you know something is happening but in the history of polish um, uh, eurovision entries we had just one time uh, final you know we never passed to the finals oh, just yes. one time and even when we passed to the finals we ended on the last position you know in the final so it means something it's people don't really think like eurovision is cool anymore it's like we never get anything over there and it's not always about the songs only because we don't have very bad entries it's not like oh my god what's that uh, but but still you know it's like we do not pass so something is wrong something is not working really well yeah, hopefully this year is going to change. Uh, we'll see. If that's going to change, then the next years will be much easier for the next ones to, to go and do that. I mean, is it about Poland as a nation not having friends in Europe? What is it about? I don't know. It's like, ask yourself. It's like, you're, you're from UK, or are you? I'm American. You? Oh, you're American, sorry. Uh, yeah, but in UK, it's like, think about that. Uh, they, they are always on the bottom, always, you know, it's like, and why? It's like, they have, don't have neighbors or what? No, the whole Europe is cooperating with UK. It's like, so what's wrong? What's wrong? Is it the songs? Sometimes it's the songs. But then, what, what, what's the next thing? It's like, maybe people feel like, why should we vote for them? You know? It's like, 
we don't feel like, or I don't know. I don't know why Poland doesn't get any 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 grit points from other countries. But we had quite difficult situation in my semi-final, for example, because we had we didn't have so many neighbors or countries which always would vote for you. We didn't have Ukraine as our supporters. We didn't have UK as our supporters. We didn't have Ireland as our support supporters. They always support us. We didn't have Georgia as our supporters. You know, they always as well try to support us a bit with the points. Uh, we had just Germany. You know. <laughs> we got seven points from Germany that year. Thank you for for that point, Germany. But you know, it's like, and then what? And then we had almost all the Balkans in our semi, and of course they were voting for each other. So sometimes it's very important to have some supporters as well. Um, this system 50-50 right now, 50-person uh, jury, 50-person uh, uh, public votes is it, okay. But still, something is wrong, you know? Still is not working as we want to. <laughs> <laughs> and Marcel, do you have any advice um, for the competitors? Like, if you look back on your own experience, there's anything you learned you can share with them? Uh, just in enjoying the time over there, because the time is very short. Uh, it's just two weeks, but during these two weeks, they can make so many friendships. They can uh, get so many contacts. Uh, they can meet so many great people, because people who who are fans of Eurovision, you know, most of them are working in some radios, most of them are preparing some concerts, you know, inviting you. Then if you're if you're really like friendly and nice to them and they like you, of course they wanna they wanna have you in that concert, you know, they wanna invite you. That's so great, that's so nice. So it's better going to Euroclub to have party, to enjoy it, to enjoy all this atmosphere than sitting at the hotel eating peanuts from the fridge of the hotel <laughs> and saying like and checking for example the rank at the internet which I am right now it doesn't matter you know the Eurovision is more about what's gonna happen after not what is right now did you know contestants who were doing that who were sitting in the hotel rather than partying <laughs> of course it's like there were just like five or six contestants which were really partying with us so what's happened to the next 34. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who were the five who partied with you? <laughs> oh God, don't remember right now. And I don't really want to say because then you will know who was sitting and checking everything. Ooh, on the it sounds like you had a good night with those five <laughs> or six. All right. Well, thank you, Marcel Mazansky. Um, and we'll see you around London. Yeah, see you.